Three, two, one, go. Dude! <laughs> what the <laughs> Dude, I had nothing, man. Yeah. <laughs> but first, how did we even get here? Look, I suck at threshold running. Like, genetically, I'm not built for it. Or at least I say that and think that. My body loves short, punchy stuff. VO2 max, sprints, fast twitch. That's what I do. But anything in that grindy zone three, low zone four, absolutely demolishes me. I just wake up the next day, not recover very well, if I haven't trained properly for it. And that's exactly why I train for it. Because if you wanna race faster from the 5K to the marathon, you have to get comfortable living right below your red line, which is your threshold. You can't fake fitness at threshold. So in this video, I'm taking you inside of one of my real training sessions. You are running with me, a broken tempo workout designed to build aerobic strength without blowing yourself up because you're riding that high aerobic, low anaerobic little threshold there. That's why it's called threshold. And if you stick around to the middle, I'll drop a free eight week training plan that helps you do the same, train your threshold so you can run faster at whatever race pace you need to. Here's what you're gonna learn in this episode what sub threshold training actually is and why most runners misjudge it, the exact workout structure I use to build that fitness without burning out, how to pace using effort, heart rate, and even power or watts when the terrain gets a bit weird, it gets sideways, it gets hot, etc. cetera, uh, sideways meaning up and down. And I end up challenging Brenton to a race with the final sprint that absolutely humbled me and revealed some stuff about genetics and his own training zones and a bunch more. Let's get into it. So I am riding to the park to do these intervals because I'm still testing my Achilles and running on straight pavement <clears throat> for about 50 minutes to an hour. It's not smart. So I'm trying to actually do the most amount of my workout or my running on soft soft surface so dirt packed dirt trails and some grass what's up man how you doing good how you doing good to see you buddy all right what are we doing today yeah. uh, we're doing three by uh six minutes about four minute pace four ten yeah is that right yeah 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 four yeah four or five four ten yeah sub threshold yeah doing warm-ups plyos swim drills as usual All right, quick science check. Your body has two main energy systems. Think of them like slow burning fireplace, that's aerobic, and rocket fuel canister, that's anaerobic. Zone two, that's the fireplace that burns fat, aerobic. Sprinting and higher efforts towards the end of your 5K, 10K, half marathon, even marathon sometimes, that's pure rocket fuel glycogen. Threshold, that's where the two sides start to blur, the aerobic and anaerobic. You're hovering near that line where lactate builds up faster than your body can clear it. So lactate is a fuel at lower levels. So when you're doing easy runs, when you're doing moderate runs, zone two, even zone three, your body's clearing out. Once you start entering zone four, this is heart rate or even pace, lactate becomes too much and your body can't clear it. Therefore, now you're in the anaerobic energy system and you're burning more glycogen than you are oxygen. Subthreshold training helps your body become more efficient at clearing and reusing that lactate, which we want, so you can run faster, longer without going over the edge. This workout keeps us right at that edge, controlled discomfort. All right, so instead of going straight into it, yeah. <laughs> we'll do about two, three minutes, we'll ease into it. Yeah. So this run, is all about discipline pacing, as I like to say. It's actually about going, <laughs> doing like a five and a half, six out of 10 effort for very short. Even though this is faster than our sub three hour marathon pace that we're going for, it's gonna get sub threshold system ready. Um, like I said, it's gonna get our body ready for using lactate as fuel. How's the toe feeling? Uh, it's a little sore. A little sore? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Has it gotten better since you've warmed up or you woke up? Better since I woke up. Okay. Woke up like a bit of an old man, but it's all right now. <laughs> Let's go. Not even that fast. All 
All right, another thing, because of the varying surfaces, I actually, I'm gonna be going on watts today. Pace a little bit, but mostly watts. So about 330 watts we'll be aiming for. Actually, close to like 300. Yeah, 300, 310 watts, which you're like, whatever, dude. <laughs> If you want to train this zone the right way, I built a free eight week sub threshold training plan. It's designed to help you get faster without burning out. And it'll show you how to nail that zone three pacing week after week so you can race faster. Download it at the link below or the QR code right here. Or if you're listening in your podcast player, just hit the show notes. And as a bonus, you'll also get access to my training newsletter where I break down workouts, pacing strategy, mental fitness, and a bunch more. Let's get back to the episode. Fitness is like compound interest. Go too hard too often and you'll blow up your bank account. But consistent effort in the right zone, that is wealth building, stacking it up. Sub threshold is that sweet spot where you're adding aerobic dollars day after day. Most runners skip it or they blast through it. But this is where for distance runners, real long-term speed comes from. All right, halfway through the first one. Set right on target, 300 watts. Pace is a bit slower, but we are on uphill. And uh, heart rate is a bit high, but we had the uphill, so might want to back it down on the next one. How you feeling? Yeah, feel good. Yeah. yeah. This is interesting. Like I said, this is a this is an exercise in pacing and like really going like holding your hand over the fire sort of thing. I'm not even. It's like eh, it's not that hard, but to get the adaptation we want early this in this season. We really need to go at a certain pace and a certain power. All right, three, two, one. Okay. All right. I meant to say. The recovery is one minute really easy to run. So we gotta keep running. Okay. That was my fault. All right, two or three done. Well, that's the thing, we should be backing it down Yeah. when the heart rate gets high. So. This is on the hills. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. we should still, because your body doesn't care about pace. Yeah, yeah. And we're trying to work that system, which is yeah. based on heart rate. seconds keeping it easy five three two one all right that was much better <laughs> lower heart rate we adjusted for the humidity power was a bit low but humidity got us today i should take that to account i never know how warm it is until i go out and start running yeah. you immediately look at the weather and you're like it's too hot <laughs> oh yeah I'm like, ah, it's fine. It'll get cool next few months. This will make you stronger. Now we're ending it and we're doing strides. These are like an espresso shot for neuromuscular systems. Espresso, not espresso to you Americans. Short sprints, not max efforts, but fast, clean form. I like to say 90%. You're teaching your legs to turn over quickly, efficiently, even when you're tired at the end of a workout or a long run. So it's nice to just stretch it out, let your legs turn over. I really like them and it's fun to run fast. Anywhere from three or four to six to eight can lock in speed mechanics. Again, these should not feel hard. They should feel nice and easy. But I decided to race Brenton because my ego and I'm a sprinter and I was like, wait, this dude is fast. Let me see how fast he really is. All right, we're doing, we're gonna do strides, 5X strides. And I like to do start with 50%, 60, 70, 80, 90% hold for about three, four seconds, then back down 80, 70, 60, 50. Best way to do strides, I think. Should I be doing this on my Achilles? Probably not, but f***ing yellow. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Dude! <laughs> dude! <laughs> what the f***? <laughs> what the f***, dude? 
I don't have a full model. Right, granted, I was holding this camera on me. Yeah, <laughs> but, dude, I had nothing, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. I got I got so many words I won't even say right now. I want to do it again. But uh, <laughs> I'm done. I'm but now nah, I'm done. <laughs> oh damn, dude. Wow. I think you're doing the wrong event, bro. I think you're doing the wrong event. <laughs> Subthreshold work doesn't get the hype, or at least it didn't until the last few years. Then the Norwegians came through with their double threshold interval training protocol. Jakob Ingebrigtsen, Christian Blumenfeld, and Gustav Eiden, all of them doing two subthreshold sessions a day, dialed in by blood lactate down to the millimoles. So they know exactly what they're doing, exact heart rate. They're taking blood, finger prick after each interval. They got it down to an exact science. It's now romanticized by amateur runners and triathletes, but it's also dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. They are training by science. So they are doing, again, the finger prick test because heart rate might lie. And they're on treadmills doing that stuff because it's way easier to do the finger prick and to control your environment when you're on a treadmill. You don't have heat issues. You don't have terrain issues, et cetera, et cetera, wind. You don't have that on the treadmill. So these guys, they are pros for a reason. But we'll save that deep dive for another episode because trust me, I love deep dives. But back to you and this whole sub-threshold running. Right now, this kind of training teaches you to run smooth when your body wants to panic. Mine did early on in my distance running life. Every time when I was doing them back in college, I would do them and they blew me up. But now I can kind of handle them, especially if I've got training early in the season, I can handle the bigger, faster threshold efforts. They're still really, really tough for me. It teaches me and you patience, control, discipline. It builds your aerobic engine, the kind that makes you faster without needing to suffer every single session. Remember, we want low heart rate, faster speeds. And that's the goal. Train smarter, not harder. Always build a ceiling, not just a wall you smash into. So if that's what you need right now, I've built a free eight week sub threshold training plan to help you dial all this in. You'll learn how to pace zone three, structure your week. You'll get base training because you need base training before this zone two running, a bunch of that and hit race day with legs that will not quit halfway. They'll keep you going. The download link is below. Hit the QR code here. Or if you're listening on the podcast player, the show notes app, just open that up and you'll get that link. And while you're there, as a huge bonus, you join the newsletter where, again, I break down the workouts like this weekly. I talk about mental health, fitness. I talk about other things like VO2 max, tempo running, long runs, etc. Train smart, race easy. Peace. If you want to find out more about what we talked about in this last episode that you just listened to or watched, go to this next video right here.